Hi there, DW Berman here with another video, this time on Lightwave. Sorry I haven't had videos up every week like I intended, but I think I'm going to back off from that a little bit and just try to get videos out frequently, because once a week can be a bit much if you have other things going on in your life. So, uh, here's my scene. What we're going to talk about this week is uh, depth map and displacement maps. Normally, I like to handle this with the compositing, or with the uh, compositing buffer export, so you go to image processing, and then there's add image filter, compositing buffer export, and among the buffers you can use is a uh, depth, and there are some options you can set. Normally I don't use normalize depth to 8, um, just because if you're, if you have things moving around in your scene covering distance, then, then your depth is going to change, so I don't know. And I like to have things have more resolution than 256 levels of gray. But this week I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about using an old school trick to make your depth map. In this case, it's going to be using the fog settings. So here I am with my camera view. If I hit F9 and render, you'll see I just have a normal render. I have this terrain. It's kind of white. For that, that doesn't matter. In fact, to show that it doesn't matter, I'm going off script and I'll change the color of it to this hideous yellow. So there we go. Um, the old school trick for doing depth map was to use this volumetrics tab, which again you can get through the windows, volumetrics and fog option. We're going to use fog. So I recently recommended this to someone else, but I told them to change the surface settings and change the lighting, and um, yeah, that that's problematic in that it's, you know, if you have lots of items in your scene or uh, lots of surfaces in your scene, that can take a while to set up, unless you're using an override system like um, some plugins by Sensei or, you know, TrueArt or by... Um, Shadermeister by DB and W. Anyway, um, I'm gonna go show go a different route this time. Uh, if you go to the objects tab, or you, you select your object and you hit properties, you can go to the render tab and you'll see we have matte object and we can set the color. So if I just click on matte object, you can see my object turned completely black. And if I switch over to the VPR mode where the interactive render, you can see it is completely black. And say we wanted it to be, you know, the closest point to us to be black and the farthest point to be white. Uh, let's change our background setting to, well, it's over here on this tab, backdrop. Let's we'll change our backdrop to white. And there we go. So now we have a white to black, or a black objects and a white background. But that's not giving us the depth map gradient that we want, so we can go to the volumetrics tab and change the fog type to linear, and we'll just click use backdrop color and see if that helps. Nope. Doesn't seem to want to do it in this case. So instead of, yep. Okay, it just didn't update. <sighs> anyway, this object is five kilometers wide, so I'll set the max depth to five kilometers, or actually at a corner, so it would be a little farther beyond that, but there we go. The stuff that's closer to us is darker, and the stuff that's farther away from us is white. Uh, if I change the min distance, this is a nice thing about using the, the fog option, is that you can set the distance manually, you know, to where your gradient starts and where it ends. So let's try 500 meters. And let's change our back distance to 7. You can just kind of dial it in like that. We can also switch out of VPR mode. And we'll just take a look at it in the perspective view. Actually, let's take a look at it from the side view. Side. I'm looking for side and it's left and right. Duh. Okay, so here's our camera over here. If I go to my op my scene options or whatever, general options, if I hit D for display options, it brings up the preferences panel. If I click over on the GL tab, that gives us the option to turn on fog circles, show fog circles. So I click that on. Now I should see some circles on our object. You can see this outer circle here is the farthest point that the fog will reach, so I can actually dial this in visually by going to the Windows, Volumetrics and Fog options, and I can just kind of dial this back. That's too far. There we go. 
there's the farthest point that is the point which will be white in this case and we can increase the minimum distance and that'll give us another circle we can use so at some point we're going to start seeing another circle there we go there's our other circle there's the other circle we wanted okay so now our black starts here or no fog starts here and complete fog ends up over there if I hit F9 you'll see we have a nice gradient from you know gray to white and of course if we wanted to we could change the object to be white the matte object to white and we could change the backdrop to be black I'm just right clicking and dragging on the color swatch and there we go we have the opposite of course you could just invert the color in post now you might be wondering hey that's great but what if I have lots of objects to change you know it's just the same as changing lots of surface colors well the nice thing with this is we can actually use the scene editor the scene slash dope editor let me duplicate this uh, object by just cloning it control C to clone so now you see we have two objects in here if I go to the properties tab and click on this upper bar here and select object render flags that gives us our dope sheet or property editor and this is our spreadsheet thing you can see I have multiple objects selected here if you click in this little box here over on the left side you can actually select more than one field at a time more than one uh, yeah column whatever cell multiple cells you can select multiple cells that way and by unchecking one you can check them all or you can use this little toggle button up here apply apply it toggles you can also change the color in here say we wanted it to go from pink to black we could do that so lots of options and that's fairly easy one other thing I want to show is how to actually do a height map which is one of the reasons for doing it like this let me get rid of my extra object here I'm gonna move my camera T for move I'm actually gonna move it to be centered and I'll move it up a little more I don't really need to move it up but I'll move it up a little more let me zoom out so there's my camera sitting above the terrain I'm gonna point it straight down which is 90 degrees so now my camera is pointed straight down and I'm gonna switch to camera view mode so you can see what I'm seeing well I'll go to perspective I guess so there's my camera looking like a normal camera I'm gonna switch this to be an orthogonal camera orthographic camera there we go now you notice that we don't have the cone going out we just have a straight line going straight down Now remember I said the terrain here is f five kilometers wide so let's change my vertical size to five kilometers now you can see I have a camera that is just one big square and you'll see that it's actually wider or taller than the scene that's because my width is not even so if you have a square piece of land that you want to do a height map on you want to make your height and width the same so now that should pretty much line up with the terrain so let me just do a top view again this isn't the only way to do this uh, I don't want you to give you that impression but this is a quick way that's nice to just kinda have in your pocket of tricks and tools and techniques okay now our fog setting is way too much let's change our settings back to the volumetric settings and we'll dial down our minimum distance until it's just above the highest point and we'll dial down the max distance until that it is you know about the max distance the bottom the lowest point of our terrain you see it's actually we'll, we'll bring it up to this grid line there so let's dial it up a little more and we'll lower or increase the amount for the whatever minimum distance now if I hit F9 we render you can see hey there's our height map again this is one where we might need to invert the image um, so let's make our backdrop color that is black okay yeah so that's the deepest part and there's our brightest part and of course we can 
uh, play with these a little later on if you want to actually change the exposure and all this. Um, probably don't need to show this in the video, but we can adjust the exposure here. Not that you necessarily would want to do that because it's supposed to be a height map. Anyway, that is the basics of this video, this technique. Like I said, there are other ways to do this, and there are some excellent plugins to help you manage your surfaces if you want to do it the other way. There's ways to do it, uh, again, through the image editor with the compositing buffer export, and that's probably the preferred way, but hey, this way works. Um, and if the other ways are giving you... Uh, a hard time trying to wrap your mind around how they're working uh, this is a, a nice fallback so thanks for watching don't forget to subscribe to this channel so you can see new videos when I do come out with new videos and uh, check out the tutorials I have for sale at liberty3d.com so the links are in the description thanks for watching have a great day